I got a problem. And that is, I'm full of discs. Full of discs. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great problem to have. I love having hard drive space. I am a terabyte, ter terabyte addict. I know this. But that doesn't really do me any good when I want to upgrade or add more storage because now I'm at that critical tipping point where I'm full of hard drives. I want to add more terabytes, but I don't have any place to put them. So I have to start upgrading the drives that I have in here, which means I don't get as much useful additional space. Which, let's be honest, that's a little depressing. You know, before when you buy a 10 terabyte hard drive, you slap a 10 terabyte hard drive in there and then boom, you have 10 more terabytes. That's amazing. Now it's like, oh, I gotta swap out a four terabyte for 10 terabytes, so I'm only gonna gain six terabytes. And I hate that, but I still want more space. Here we go. <laughs> Before I get too far into this video, I want you to imagine yourself as an egg. Let's say you're just a normal egg going around the internet, browsing the internet, not a care in the world. You download things, you buy things, you do things. And then one day, everything you know comes to an end. Why? because you don't have NordVPN. Use my link in the description for a one month money back guarantee and 75% off your order. So I actually still have this drive right here. This is the one that I used when I was demonstrating the little tape method and how to get the white label drives to work. The ones that you shuck out of the Western Digital external USB enclosures. That still worked. I unplugged it and plugged it a couple times. Still going strong, but I actually don't need that in this little Ryzen test bench of mine, don't need that at all. So that was basically just for that video. And now I wanna put this in Zeus, my main server. But of course my main server is full. Look at all those nice juicy Western digital hard drives in there. None of them are giving me any problems whatsoever, but I do have some that are kind of full. And I do have a bunch of these old four terabyte drives that definitely need replaced. And I plan on replacing them slowly as I go along. I actually did a little bit of research on which one was the best drive to replace, which is definitely going to be this disc five. Which is four years, four months, five days, and 15 hours old. It doesn't have any kind of issues because it's Western Digital and Western Digital is the best hard drive manufacturing on the planet, but that is the one that I wanna replace because why not go with the oldest one? And since I don't know which drive is which, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to spin down all of my drives. So that way I can spin up just drive five and I can see which one it is actually in the server case because I really just don't know which one's which. So right now all the blue lights are lit up, but I don't have any of the green status lights as far as activity lights going on. So now that these are all just kind of chilling, no killing, except for that one, screw that one right there and that, and that one too. Anyways, now that most of these, I think it's gonna be probably one of these. Now that most of these are just chilling, let's spin up drive five and see which one lights up. Oh, it's that one right there. That one is drive five. So I actually browsed to drive five and I started copying a file from it. So yeah, I confirmed that this third one from the top is drive five. Now that I know which one it is, the next thing I have to do is stop the entire array. So I'm just gonna go over here and, and stop it. Okay, now that the array is shut down, I see here the drop down, I can select what device. Obviously, this is the existing device and I have to take this out of the server. Holy crap, it's a green drive! <laughs> oh my, I forgot I had green drives. Holy bananas. Jiminy Christmas. A little thing I like to do whenever I pull something out of a server like this is I pull the drive out, powering it down, and then I wait a little bit. 
basically because the thing's still spinning probably and I just, you know, I don't want to risk like causing damage because hard drives hate vibrator vibrations. So you don't want to do that to a hard drive. I mean, be kind, don't vibrate. Okay, looks like, looks like this one only has one screw in it, you know, that's okay. It only needs one. Oh, wrong way. There we go. And in she goes. So pretty. Be good, loved one. Be good. Daddy loves you. So of course it's gonna say disc five is missing. So... I don't see the new drive. Let's try to reload. Let's, treat, let's do that again. Reload. There it is. There's the new drive. Boom. Just like that. We swap from four to eight terabytes. And then, see down here, I'm going to start it, but it's going to do a parity sync and or data rebuild. So, clicky clicky. And just like that, disk five is replaced. As you can see, it has that little symbol on there, the caution symbol, meaning that the data is still accessible. However, it's being simulated by the parity drives and you know the rest of the drives. So anything I wanna access off this drive, I can technically still see, but it's not actually reading from the drive. But right now it is going through and it is actively writing all of the data from the parity drive. So it's being reconstructed and rebuilt as we speak, just you know, reading all the data from the parity and all the other drives. Parity sync slash data rebuild of 0%, which means I'm gonna be here for probably a day. I think it's about 24 hours for these 10 terabyte drives to go through a full rebuild. And of course I'm getting like notifications of the drive and the issues with the drive, but it's being rebuilt, so these are only things that I already know. It's not really that big of a deal. They're all working together. It's just so beautiful. Oh, be good, little one. Be good. And there you have it. That, that's literally all there is to it. It doesn't take much. You just you pull the old one out and you put the new one in and you assign it. It's pretty basic. It's just gonna take a while for that to finish up. Well guys, check out the link in the description down below if you wanna learn more about having to prep some of these hard drives for consumer computers. I basically just delete the 3.3 volt pin, but thankfully Zeus doesn't actually need that because this is a server backplate and it doesn't even use those pins. So I don't have to worry about that. But if you're using this in a standard, like consumer grade hardware environment, you might have to actually do that. Either way, you can check out the links to that video in the description down below, or I will even link to the USB drive on Amazon that this came from, the same link that I actually keep an eye on for active sales, because sometimes either with Amazon, Best Buy, etc., you can get these hard drives for a lot cheaper than what you would normally be able to buy a normal OEM drive. Any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, always go down below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. That's a wrap. You just... You just do yourself. You do you. And go do me. Just don't don't start on fire. Alright, bud. Love you. <laughs>